Port Moody, British Columbia, Canada, Julia, the Juho Bud. Now, the fight for racial justice is not something that you can win by beating your opponents physically. But one of the world's best mixed martial artists is using her high profile to promote the cause. Julia Budd is a former featherweight champ. Julia, hello there. Hi. And next to her is Lance Gibson, her trainer, her husband, and the owner of Gibson MMA and Health Bar in Port Moody. Lance, hello to you. How are you doing, Gloria? I'm I doing am, good. I am doing very well. You two must be riding a little bit of a high right now. Julia, congratulations. You, you won the Bellator 244. Uh, tell yeah. us all about, this is your first fight since, since losing your title in January. What was it like? Yeah, it was unreal. It was so great to get back in there. And um, yeah, it was quite a different experience during fighting during uh, these times during a pandemic it was a little bit different. So it was it was interesting. <laughs> so you had to travel down to the States. Was there, you know, any kind of quarantine protocol or anything like that that you had to do pre fight? Oh, yeah. So we had to be tested before we went. And then we had to be tested every day that we were down there and um, quarantined like we were in our room for, you know, the majority of it and um, just basically tested every day and um, socially distanced masks, you know, um, just hanging out with each other, really. Yeah. OK, Lance, what was that? What about training up until the last minute and getting Julie, I guess, in that head game as well? Well, it, you know, it was, it was actually good because we were actually since March, we were we were actually we have a family of, of fighters too as well. So I have my son who fights in Bellator as well, Lance Gibson Jr. And they're actually sparring partners. So we were, we're lucky enough to have a family member that we could train with. And, and because of the, the pandemic, you can't just pick, have random partners. So Junior's a professional fighter and my wife's a professional fighter. And we all just worked through this whole thing. We brought Matt's up into the Sunshine Coast as well when we went away and we just trained every day. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. Now, now, Julia, uh, Julia, at the newser, you know, the news conference after the fight, you were asked what was going through your head. And some of those moments when Lance is talking to you in the corner, you know, between <laughs> rounds, that kind of thing, you just see that intensity on your yeah. face. But but in the news conference, you talked a little bit about the, the bigger fight, I guess, uh, which is the fight against racial injustice. Just give yeah. us more about, you know, the connection between those two. Yeah, you know, I just think that the world right now is being called to, you know, I said, like, be kinder to one another and, um, you know, look out for the people that right now are, are oppressed and um, not being treated fairly or equally because of their skin. And I was just saying that that fire kind of uh, all summer since the George Floyd murder, it kind of erupted a you know, the world is fighting for this. And um, it's been something that on the Sunshine Coast, we've been meeting um, once a month, talking about with our Indigenous people and um, well, my husband, my stepson, um, we've been meeting together and just talking about some of the issues that are around and in Canada as well as the United States and, and yeah, and just bringing kind of awareness to it. So it's something that um, I'm passionate about and it helped fuel me and kind of get my fighting spirit back into wanting to, you know, be a professional fighter and, and um, yeah, get back into the cage. So after losing my title in January, it was, it, it wasn't hard to get motivated again, but it got motivated back again. And then it really fired me up when I'm seeing what's going on in the world. So. Well, yeah, I mean, and over the summer, I know you organized a, a, a rally, a Black Lives Matter related rally in the Sunshine Coast. 2,000 people came out for that. So you, you've got a lot of support behind you as well. Now, you mentioned uh, your stepson, Lance Gibson Jr. And Lance, uh, you're a retired fighter yourself. So yeah. talk a little bit more about, you know, the kinds of conversations that you're having with your son. And especially when you go to major events like Bellator together, you're, you're literally in the corner for your family yeah you know it's something that uh, my son grew up around martial arts obviously since he was before he could even walk so he grew up in the gym and um it's it's a way of life for our family and it's um the martial arts is more than just um the fight it's more it's about helping people who don't have a voice helping people who don't have confidence giving the, them a sense of community giving them um, values and integrity. And that's what how we change the world. We, we have kids as low as four years old, all the way up to our oldest students, 70, 70 Maria. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we, we just, we have a sense of community and we want to just spread 
goodness around, amongst people and um, going and being able to get on the stage and have a family build a fight in front of the international in front of the whole world. What's a better way of getting our voice out? Well, yeah, you want to build some goodness. So uh, what kind of challenges are there to doing that right now, Lance, especially for you and your son right now? Um, it's the world's divided right now. And there's two sides. There's good and bad. That's all I, that's all I see. So it's not politics. It's, about it's not politics. Humanity. It's about humanity. And um, we just want to, I, it's, I have different worries as, as a father, as a black father um, with a black son that a lot of people don't have to worry about, you know, and I, I've had to teach him that from a young age until now. I worry about my son all the time. And there's, it's unfortunate because the way the world's going right now, but I think this is a change for the better. You know, it gets really dark, but then it, the light comes. And um, the conversations we have them is just, he's such a good kid anyway, well, a young man now. And um, we just want to be positive and help, help people and um, succeed and, show, and be a, a good role model for young kids of all colors. Well, and, and this conversation right now is going a long way to that end as well. So thank you both very much. And, and here you are. You know, you've, you've all been in isolation since returning from the States. Uh, Julia, how are you all holding up? We're holding up good. You know, we've got each other. And, and um, yeah, we're just, we're just uh, following the 14-day, you know, staying away from everyone until we're all clear from, our, from coming back from the U.S. But um, we're so happy we did it. It's worth, it's worth it. So it was awesome to go down there and get the win and, and be able to, you know, get back in there. So. And what's next on your competitive horizons? Any other fights? Yeah, well, Lance Jr. is going to, we're going to be heading back down in October, beginning of October, for him to fight in Bellator. So he's next, and then I'm hopefully going to be up there in November. So kind of every month we'll be traveling down there. We'll let you get back to your, uh, to your practicing, to your working out. <laughs> it's nice to know that you can do that all in the family. Julia, Lance, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Gloria.